Okay, well, the first thing we want to do here, we want to assemble our both of our drums. And uh, before we do that, let's talk about the pistons that came in the kit. Now, we have uh, two pistons here. And uh, one is a late model and one is an early model. And uh, I'm going to put them side by side here. I don't know if it's going to be... Uh, we can catch it on camera or not. But the one to my right, uh, it's taller than the one to my left. And I'm talking about this uh, this pocket right here. It's deeper and it's taller on this on this end. And this is kind of almost flat or almost flush. Let me get them a little closer here. So this is the the taller piston. I don't know if you can appreciate that well on the camera. I don't know if you can make make it out. Uh, but if I flip them over, I think it's easy, it's easier this way that the one to my right this one it's uh, is deeper and the reason for that is that uh, this piston here the forward piston uh, the, the 98 and up models this is deeper the return spring is different it's a coil type spring that it goes all, all the way this high and uh, to accommodate for that coil type spring the, this pocket has to be a little deeper and they changed uh, the forward piston and also it affects uh, the depth of the uh, forward drum and those parts are not interchangeable you have to use uh, the drum that is for the proper and the correct piston okay so now that we've identified this is our old piston and if we see here this is our shallow piston so uh, this is what we are going to use here on this transmission. We're going to use the shallow one. Well, no, this is the deep piston, and this is the shallow piston. See how they all—they both are uh, kind of uh, the the same. And I, I mean, if I get the deep piston, I don't know if you can tell the difference. I mean, but I can see it right away. I mean, because I'm holding them, but I don't know if you're going to be able to appreciate that in the camera. So this is the deep piston. This is the one we don't want to use. It comes extra in the in the overhaul kit. So uh, we're not using this. We're using the shallow one, which is this one, and this is the old one. We're going to go ahead and discard this one. Okay. Now that we've identified all, all our pistons, now uh, what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to install our lip seals. And uh, this is our forward piston, and the lip seals they always uh, the lip always goes to the inside of the drum okay so that's the lip seal for our forward piston now we install our lip seal for our direct piston this is a leaf cut seal that is going to go inside the, the drum here let's go ahead and install that It's basically like a D-ring. The the portion that goes inside the uh, the groove is is flat, and the the outer portion here it's like it's shaped like a D. So it's a leaf cut uh, a seal uh, that has the shape of a D. It's round on that edge, and the same thing here. This is a lip seal. Let me get that closer here. This is the lip. You can see the flat side. The lip goes down like that and it goes inside the drum like that okay now that we have our uh, uh, lip seals and our uh, leaf cut seal installed let's go ahead and uh, put install two of our ceiling rings that go here is these are the two yellow ceiling rings and then we have a uh, uh, lube uh, ceiling ring that goes on this side I'm going to put some uh, green assembly loop. I mean, I use the green assembly loop for all of my bearings and my uh, washers to hold them in place. And I use the same thing uh, on my ceiling rings as well. Now, the cut of the ring, make sure that you install it correctly and not backwards because you're, you're, you're going to create some problems. So it goes like this. It's, it was actually one piece, but what they do, they just cut it in... Um, uh, at a, at a sl uh, angle like that for easy installation this is a one piece uh, ceiling ring uh, this one has it, it actually seals the 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 front loop to the rear loop 
Let's go ahead and install this uh, ceiling ring here. And the same thing with the other one. Kind of mold them in place there with your, with your hand, like that. We're not going to worry about this one yet until we are ready to assemble everything. Now let's go ahead and lube everything up. Now for lubrication, I like to use the blue one. And I only use blue and green. Uh, but there is a, a red assembly loop that is the same viscosity as the blue one and there is a gold assembly loop that is the same viscosity as the blue one as well. Now the red one I don't like to use it because that's just my personal preference. If you use it like on a pump o-ring and uh, you have the transmission installed and uh, this uh, assembly loop it gets watery and it starts dripping once once it gets hot so uh, what happens is that you will be mistaken uh, assembly loop for a for a leak because the transmission fluid is red and if you use the red assembly loop I mean you're gonna get you're gonna be a little bit confused you're not gonna be sure uh, what's going on with that leak the yellow one the same thing if, uh, if, if, if it's on the pump if it's a real wheel drive uh, and if it's uh, in between the engine and the transmission, the gold one is like the same color as motor oil. You may think that the rear main seal might be leaking. That's just my personal preference. That's why I don't use those uh, colors. And uh, I just stick to my blue and the green. Like I say, that's my personal preference. And don't get me wrong, you can use whatever you want. You can actually use STP as well, you know, to assemble this uh, transmission. I know there's a lot of uh, builders that will disagree with me, but STP is designed to pass through your motor oil filter, and it will not clog your transmission filter. That's just a myth. Actually, in the past, I've used that before a lot, and uh, every now and then, uh, when I ran out of this stuff, and it's the weekend, I just go to my auto parts stores, AutoZone, Riley, or whatever, and just pick up some STP to finish the job. But yeah, I use it. But it's personal preference, whatever you want to use. All this little thing right here, this uh, Lib Wizard, it's pretty cool. It comes, it comes in the, in all the Transtech kits. Here's the new one. This is one old one. Now, uh, the uh, molded pistons are a little tricky to get in there. But this is the this is what what you use this thing for to get the uh, the lip uh, kind of molded on the on the surface of the drum. Sometimes it's kind of hard. I'm not used to using this, but I'm gonna kind of give you a demonstration as to uh, if it does work or not. But as you see here, I'm struggling a little bit. Is my outer lip. I'm just using my pick here. The new pistons are always a little bit, uh, gotta kind of work them in. The old ones, I mean, they get shrunk a little bit and they just fall in there. If you have a piston that just falls in, I mean, that's an indication that it's worn out and you need to replace it. Well, it's kind of going in there, but let's see. Try my uh, lip seal installer here or my pick. This is one of the reasons I use uh, all of my picks are 45s on an angle. And uh, you always want to go backwards like that, not forward. You don't want to poke and make a hole, make a cut on the, on the lip. It'll go in. It will, trust me. Yeah, you can get some of uh, the, uh, the piston installers. You can spend that money if you want to, but why do that if they... A little bit of patience and lubrication, and it will go in. Now, I'm keeping pressure with my left hand all the time. I don't want the piston to pop out and then uh, restart all over. Sometimes that happens. There we go. All the way in. Now 
Now I'm going to take this to my foot press, install uh, my snap ring, and we'll do the opposite, the opposite side. I'll be right back.